Hi, I'm Michael Smith for Nevada Trails. Today I have a very special show. I have uh, Barbara Stewart, and she produced a video of something I'm very close to, uh, Take a Hike. And it basically shows the trails to go to around the Tahoe Basin, right? Yes, it does. And um, I'm very proud of you. I, I, uh, I've watched your show four or five times. And um, one of the things that's very near and dear to my heart are disabled people. Mm -hmm. And in your show, you have at least three hikes that disabled people can do, I believe. Yes, I do. And, um, you know, wheelchair accessible. And what I liked about your video was it's very simplistic. You give a map exactly of how to get there. You give a little bit of training to what you should do. Mm -hmm. So you're not totally unprepared for what you're going right. to experience. And I thought that was very important because you don't want to get there all of a sudden find out that you should have had sunblock or mosquito repellent or extra water or yeah. good socks. I think you even had a, you know, some other things about... Compass and a whistle. And a, yeah, and you know, I just thought... Poncho. Yeah, poncho, and because uh, you were out there, looks like a lot of hours. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. <laughs> it was fun. <laughs> well, how'd you end up doing this? Did you, you're just an avid hiker, and you decided to go out and shoot video? Yeah, I'm an avid hiker and fisherman. And a fisherman. Yes, and so originally I was going to make a fishing hiking video for backcountry. And I just couldn't catch a fish on camera. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, I, I uh, be honest, I'm a, uh, an avid fisherman, but uh, a lot of times just throwing a hook out there is kind of an excuse to get out there and just be, be with nature. It's just a bonus when you get the fish. I know in video they expect you to have to land a fish, but as also a videographer, it's hard to get that fish on camera. Yeah. So I talk about so when I'm at certain lakes what kind of fish are in there and how the fishing is, but I just made a hiking video. Well, I, I thought it was very well done. Um, I hope to, um, I hope you do more shows because <laughs> this is some good stuff. Yeah, and uh, and I wanted to do all all kinds of hikes. We start with the the moderate, you know, and even wheelchair accessible, like you said, and uh, then graduate. And we did more difficult. So we got everything in there: easy to moderate to strenuous Mount Talac, which is the granddaddy hike in Lake Tahoe, I think. Well, it's, uh, it's absolutely, uh, absolutely beautiful, uh, beautiful. You have a star in your show that got a lot of airtime. My dog. Your dog. And um, what's your dog's name? Dallas. Dallas? Yeah. And uh, he was quite, got a lot of photo opportunities in your show. Yeah. And he's your constant hiking companion. Yep. <laughs> yep. I'm always with my dog. But he looked like he liked getting wet a lot. Yeah, they, oh, you can't keep a lab out of the water. I know. You just can't. <laughs> Everything that had water that he was coming out of or going into. Yep. <laughs> so uh, when you were shooting this video, you also had a lot of friends with you to help you do the, uh, the video as well. Yes, I did. I called my friends and said, how about going on a hike with me today? <laughs> <laughs> well, when you did all these hikes, did you, like, do it multiple times or just one time? Or? Oh, multiple. Multiple, multiple. I've shot... I shot most of those hikes in the video at least three times. Wow. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and show uh, one of your three-minute um, examples of what you do. Okay. Uh, what was the first one you selected? Lake Winnemucca. Lake That's Winnemucca. It's at the top of Carson Pass, and it's got the best wildflowers in all of Tahoe. And uh, coming about uh, July, they start coming out really strong. So it's one of the prettiest hikes, I think. Well, that sounds good. Let's show... A Clip from Take a Hike. The hike to Winnemucca and Round Top Lakes is famous for the wildflowers as well as the spectacular views of Caples Lake. Lake Winnemucca is two miles, Round Top is three miles from here on a well-maintained trail. This is a rather easy hike because to Winnemucca Lake, we get to start at the top, which is 8,563 feet, and our destination is 8,980 feet, which means only moderate climbing is involved with outrageous views and wonderful wildflowers. Round Top sits at an elevation of 9,420 feet, therefore making the hike to the top rather strenuous, but the views are well worth the effort. To get there, take Highway 89 at Myers to the junction of Highway 88 in Hope Valley. Turn right at the junction and travel to the top of Carson Pass. You are required to pay a fee to park. This is a very popular trailhead and always busy. The Pacific Crest Trail intersects here. The Little Log Cabin, usually open, offers information on the area. 
We will greet a lot of fellow hikers along this trail. In case you're tired, you can rest a while in this seat nature made, like Michelle is doing. Elephant's Back is where Captain Fremont first saw Lake Tahoe while crossing the Carson Pass with his troops in 1844. Frog's Lake is only one mile in and is a very pleasant spot to stop and swim and have your picnic if that's all the hiking you want to do today. However, we're going on to Winnemucca and Round Top Lakes. As we leave Frog's Lake and adventure on to Lake Winnemucca, we see a few of our fellow hikers on the trail. Just up the trail, you have this splendid view of Capel's Lake below us. It resembles the shape of a heart, wouldn't you agree? Here at the trail marker, you can take a left and continue on the Pacific Crest Trail, or go right and on to Lake Winnemucca, which is just one mile from the marker. Now the wildflowers are abundant. This trail offers the best wildflowers in the area, in my opinion. Hiking is so pleasant, especially when you get a treat like this. Summer months are the best time to enjoy the spectacular wildflowers on this hike. Michelle takes time to enjoy one of the many spectacular views offered on this hike. Here's a snow patch, which the dogs sure seem to be enjoying. That'll cool them off. Just beyond the snow patch, we reach Lake Winnemucca. These meadows are so beautiful. The dogs were sure ready for a swim. Find yourself a spot and have a picnic, relax, and enjoy nature at its best. Well, I tell you, that was an interesting uh, uh, clip of how to get there and what to do when you get there. Mm -hmm. And it certainly looked like you were having a good time when you are there. Yes. Yeah, hiking's great. It's not only good physically, but it's great for the mind, too. Are you involved with any uh, hiking uh, organizations? Or are you just out there by yourself? Or? No, I have a little. I have a small group of people that we hike that I hike with all summer long. We do our Monday afternoon hike. We get together every Monday. Oh, and go on and hike. Well, you, these are your video has what uh, twelve hikes? I believe twelve different hikes. Yeah. Twelve different hikes. Now, do you do um, other hikes besides this? Of course, I bet you know. You're are you creating other hikes to do for future shows or? Oh yeah, I, I, it was hard to, to narrow it down to 12. That's what I was going to say, is yeah. to, you, know, you probably have a whole bunch more you can do. Right, but it was hard to just to pick, pick the 12 to go in the tape, because uh, there's so many, there's so many hikes in Tahoe. Just could hike every day a different one. Well, how long have you lived in South Lake Tahoe? 31 years. So you're kind of new to the area. <laughs> yeah, I'm real new. I'm just discovering the hikes. <laughs> a lot of locals, you know, they have to be there like a lifetime for some reason. But uh, it sounds like you have a lot of fun hiking. Well, how did you get the hiking bug? I, well, you know, it really took me a while to get into nature because when I moved to Tahoe, I was a city girl. And uh, it just took me a while. But once I got into nature, I fell in love with it. And... Um, just been doing it ever since. Well, what I like about uh, getting out there and, and doing the nature thing is I'll just spend an afternoon in the Hope Valley and it seems like I was gone two, three days. Yeah. It just, it just makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. And you do this every Monday with your group of friends? Yeah, I, I go hiking with them, but I go, I go on a walk or a hike every day. Oh, wow, that's excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you decide where you're going to do it on your daily trip or your week, week trip with your friends? Um, sometimes they pick, sometimes I pick. <laughs> <laughs> well, how'd you get this videography bug, too? You used to start, because carrying a camera and a tripod is, is a lot of work. Yeah. Because uh, I don't think people realize when they see video, especially your video, you're, you're shooting stuff from the top of a mountain. Right. And that, it, what is really hard is, uh, one thing that's important in hiking is uh, momentum. You know, you get a pace and you keep it up. But when you're filming and you stop and, and do certain shots of the hike, then you have to start all over again going back up that hill. So, yeah, it was a little challenging. You get your adrenaline going, then you stop and yeah. you cool off a little bit and things. So you probably became a, an expert at what to bring, too, then. Oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, you probably had a lot of... Uh, well, you had to bring food, I guess. For yeah, and I have a segment in my tape there, uh, What You Will Need. And it tells you, recommends what you will need for a good hike to take along so you don't have any surprises. That was, uh, was that a young, young woman? Mm -hmm. Leah Simon is her name. Oh, well, where did you find her? She's my girlfriend's daughter. Oh, putting the uh, little friends in the video. Sure, I had someone good looking in there, didn't I? 
<laughs> well, she's, uh, she's pretty, and she did a very clear uh, job of, uh, of educating me on what to do. Yes. And uh, one thing I, I was curious of, someone crossed a stream, and there was something about rock socks or something? Or Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. I hadn't heard about that before. You buy a pair of socks in case you're, you have to walk across rocks? Walk across water or rocks, yeah, so that you don't hurt your feet, you know, or, or fall. You're sturdier. See, they're just, um, they've got a heavy plastic on the bottom, and they're nylon. You just slip them on like a tennis shoe. Well, I could have used this years ago. I like the idea. I'm always playing in the water. And when I uh, first moved to uh, uh, California, I was always looking for gold. I had the gold bug. Oh. And, well, actually, that was my excuse, like going fishing. I, was, I liked finding rocks, and I had some luck finding crystals. Mm -hmm. So I was always playing in the old riverbeds. And mm -hmm. the rock sacks would have came in handy. Cause sometimes yeah, they would have. Well, so, sometimes you get a pebble in your shoe. Mm -hmm. I was just thinking if you had a rock sock on, besides walking across the water, you'd be, you'd be safe until you get a chance to stop and take off your shoes and things. And Yeah, my one friend that had those rock socks, she's afraid of logs. She won't walk on a log. Well, some people are afraid of that, you know. Well, So this way she could cross water and not have to worry about it. Well, that log that he crossed it was kind of, wasn't really that wide. No, it just, I mean, it didn't look dangerous, but it didn't look like I wanted to. I wanted to. I wanted to walk around it too. <laughs> you might want to go across the water too. Huh? Yeah, because you know, I told her I got I got injured a while back, and my balance isn't what it used to be. Mm -hmm. So I was thinking, if I was on that log, I'd be like, ah, I think the water route sounded good. Yeah. But uh, some of the pictures you had were some wide logs, and then mm -hmm. some of the trails looked like the um, the Forest Service did a pretty good job of, of making them, or someone did a good job of making some of these trails. The Forest Service does an excellent job, and they're always. Uh, maintaining them. It's a continuous thing. And they re, they've redone some trails. I went on a couple of hikes this summer that I hadn't been on in a while. And uh, like going to um, Round Top or Dardanelles, you had to go down this steep, steep ridge. And coming back up was very, very hard. Now they've made that all switch back. All right. So it makes it better for everybody because now, you know, you don't have to worry about that huge climb out. And uh, so it just made they're they're always improving the, the trails. Well, with your um, your experience, do um, do they take some of your advice? Do you, are you allowed to give advice to the Forest Service how to help they these trails? Ask. They don't ask. <laughs> <laughs> you should ask Barbara because she knows what she's talking about. <laughs> I'm sure they watch the show, and that's probably how they get their information. <laughs> Was there anything you would correct on some of these trails for the future, or can we make them more wheelchair friendly? Because you got three trails that are pretty good. Uh huh. Yeah. There, there's there's some more uh, small little uh, uh, trails out there for you know wheelchair that uh, people can get to. There's there's so many views in Tahoe, you know, that that you can really uh, get to pretty easily to where you're not um, deprived of any of the beauty. Well, I like the uh, the Valhalla trails. That was a nice. Oh. That's one thing I do all the time. Just when I need to, um, just get away from um, get out of the house. And there's so much history out there. Yeah. At Valhalla Estates. Yeah, there's so much history. It's it's nice. So it's kind of neat to see on your video some of the stuff I like to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of being selfish, but when someone says, "Hey," you know, it's kind of reinforcement that I'm doing something that someone says that's top twelve trails. Uh huh. And it's you know it's. It's well. It's an easy hike, but it's wheelchair accessible, and um, that's it was very important. And um, like I said, uh, I have a friend who's uh, legally blind, and these trails that you made it simple for us to go out and not be afraid of tripping over something. Right. And uh, well, we're going to go to break, and when we come out of break, we're going to go ahead and show another one of your videos. It's the okay. one on Mount Talak, I believe, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, so we showed uh, well Mount Talak. I think you'll really enjoy it. It's an absolutely beautiful video, and uh, and you did a great job, and we'll be back and enjoy the video. Thank you. If erosion from my land goes into the lake, it won't be the gem, the wonderful thing that it is now. Everybody is making a contribution to the decline in water quality unless they actually use best management practices. I feel privileged to be able to live here, and this way we will all contribute to the clarity of the lake. What lies beyond the curve in the trail? What secrets are there? My feet carry me into its veiled mystery, and I want to taste the sweet air and hear the song bestowed by nature. 
just this once until the next curve, the next trail, the next walk through the Carson Valley. The Genoa Foothill Trail System will connect the Carson Valley with the Tahoe Rim Trail, providing a wonderful trail system near the oldest town in Nevada. This is just one of many projects the Carson Valley Trails Association is working on for our communities, but we cannot do it alone. Please contact us by visiting our website and find out about becoming a member or signing up to help build our community trails. We're looking forward to seeing you out in the most beautiful land Nevada has to offer. Do you have your sunscreen and mosquito repellent on? To get there, travel 3.7 miles from the Y on Highway 89. Approximately one half mile after you go over the bridge for Taylor Creek, you will see a brown forest sign on your right with Mount Talak Trailhead on it. Just after that, you will make a left turn on the road across from the Baldwin Beach entrance. Parking is free at this trailhead. You are required to fill out and carry a permit for this hike because this is an entrance to Desolation Wilderness and is a very popular trailhead. The first section of this trail is where Al Gore hiked when he visited Tahoe when he was vice president. The trail becomes rocky as you climb to the top of the first ridge where you have these fantastic views with Fallen Leaf Lake just below us and Lake Tahoe visible just beyond. You cannot take too much water when making this hike. A power snack will be perfect for extra energy and fruit is always beneficial. Planning and having enough supplies will make your adventure more pleasurable. We reach the top of the first ridge and continue on to the other side of the ridge. Here is our Desolation Wilderness sign and just beyond it is our first stop at Floating Island Lake. This is a very picturesque lake. We'll stop here, relax, and have a snack before continuing to the top. As we leave Floating Island, we start up the trail towards Cathedral Lake, which is a little under a mile from here. We still have the forest for our shade, and that's greatly appreciated. We cross the stream just before we reach Cathedral Lake. We stop here for a short rest and a little power snack. This large group is also going to the top today. See you there. Once out of the forest, the views become awesome. David stops to take a drink of water and catch his breath while taking in the panoramic views. The climb to the top is relentless now. You're exposed to the sun and traveling over these shale rocks. No pain, no gain. However, our efforts reward us with these spectacular views. Here, the trail splits. If you go right, the rocks and climb are dangerous. Stay to the left. The trail is more forgiving. Once we reach the top, we have to stop and take in the views. You have one more mile until you reach the summit. The wildflowers on this side of the mountain are beautiful. And we have views of desolation wilderness. Louisanne has a little snack while taking in the views. That's Aloha Lake over there. Now we're getting close to the top of this masterpiece. We make a turn to the right at the trail marker. Rewards, rewards. At the top, we have all the marvelous splendor and beauty of Lake Tahoe. A picnic at the top is well deserved. Table with a view? Gilmore Lake looks inviting. Ah, the wonderful generosity of nature. It's ours to enjoy. The air is so sweet. And why shouldn't it be? It is the same air the angels breathe. Once you have mastered the hike to the top, you can put your name in the box with all the others who have enjoyed this adventure. No dogs today. This hike is too hard on their paws. My paws too. Ouch! Hi, we're back with uh, Barbara Stewart of Take a Hike, and that video of Mount Talak, that's a, that's a workout. Oh yes, you have to be in shape to take that hike. You don't want to just go on that as a casual walk. You want to plan it. You want to start very early in the day is my, my recommendation because it gets so hot that because you're exposed to the sun halfway up, the, the whole rest of the way up. And it's, it's a very strenuous hike. It's five and a half miles. 
and you're climbing, you're starting at 6,200 feet, and you're going up to 97. Mm -hmm. So you've got quite a climb. Well, it sounds good. Oh, yeah, it's great. It's beautiful. The views, the views are just absolutely not uh, anywhere else you can see them from. So if you're a hiker from out of state or just want to hike that's challenging, this is the one to choose. Challenging, challenging and absolutely beautiful. Well, the pictures are absolutely beautiful. You did a good job. Yeah. I like some of the far shots from Mount Tulac and some of your other hikes where you could see, like, the cross. Mm -hmm. That um, was amazing. Yeah, you know, the Indians say that oh, the snow that gets in the cross on Tulac, the T, yeah. that when all the snow is gone uh, out of the T, then it's three weeks till snow again. And I've kind of watched that to see if it's true. You know, if when the, the snow melts, if we're going to get a storm within that three weeks, and it really runs pretty close. Well, how did we do this year? We came right on it. It was, <laughs> it was like three to four weeks, and we had a storm. So when you see Mount Tulac has that cross. It's gone, yeah. And it's gone, what, August or no, I mean, uh, probably October. Well, it just depends on, yeah. on how hot the summer is and how much snow there's up there. So when it's gone, it's, yeah, three weeks till. Um, three weeks till the snow's going to fly. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Because, you know, obviously the, the altitude will get a little bit earlier than everybody else, but it was absolutely beautiful from the distance. Because I'd seen that, but I never really appreciated it until I saw your video. Oh. Exactly. And after that, I was like, yeah, there's that, there's that. It, the there cross. it is again. Yeah, it's, it's, quite, it's a, quite a landmark, you know, that T on Tulac is really beautiful. And the hike, because when you get up to the top and then you uh, can see both sides, and then you open up into desolation on the other side, and that's just spectacular with the, the lakes, Aloha Lake and Gilmore Lake that you can see right from the top up there. It's really beautiful. Sounds like you're pretty spoiled. I, I met a, uh, uh, a friend of a my girlfriend who he said um, that was the best one of the best things he ever did in his youth was to climb that mountain mm -hmm. it was like a bonding experience with his dad and uh, when I was talking about things that I like to do and he said this is a must do and uh, but you know as life goes on you never get a chance sometimes to do things well when I saw your video it was like now I know what he how special it was I got a little taste of that feeling mm -hmm. and uh, so I really appreciate you doing this because people can can see some of those things they couldn't ever see before and and also have the intelligence of how hard it is to do it. Yes, yeah. Well, and that lets you know, you know, by, by the description of the trailhead at the beginning of each hike, yeah. how strenuous it is, how, what the distance is, and the elevation change, if you need to have a permit, a wilderness permit to go back into the area, and if you have to pay to park or if parking's free. Well, I was curious about the wilderness permit. I didn't know anything about that. But you have to buy, uh, buy it. If, how do you buy a permit when there's no one there? You don't buy it. It's it just you have to fill one out. Okay. They're at the trailhead, right at the trailhead at the uh, sign where the uh, maps and everything are. There's a little box there. Okay. And when one is required, there will be, the, there, will be there in the box, and you fill it out with your information of who you are, what hike you're going on, how many are in your group, and oh. how long you plan to be in the area if you're going to spend the night or if it's just a day hike. And that way they can track you in case something happens to you. So that, that goes to search and rescue if you're not back when you're safe come back. It helps them out and it helps out the funding for, uh, for our wild areas, you know, to, to be able to use them the funding that they get because they can show how many people use it. And desolation is the most, the highest used area in the United States. Excellent. A desolation wilderness. So that you can imagine the amount of people that go in and out of there, just like Yosemite, and they, you know, and they monitor them and then they help to get funds to keep the area up and uh, keep everything safe for everybody. So the more of those forms are filled out, the more chances we get of more money coming to our area. Yeah, that's why you really need to encourage people to fill them out because it helps us. Well, yeah, then fill out these forms if you're going hiking because uh, these days we're competing for funds for other parks around the country, I yeah. bet. And so and that's a good education experience for me. I didn't know. And if you don't fill one out and it's required, you can get fined. Well, did I see that on one of his backpacks that he had a tag on or something? Yes, that's the wilderness permit. Okay. Because you have to carry it. When you fill it out, then you have to carry it exposed. So you put it on the back of your backpack or on your clothing to where if a ranger came by, they could see that you have it. Yeah, because then you're just being smart for everybody that you're, you're going to be safe. Right. And um, 
Have you ever had a, a reason to call search and rescue for anything? Or One time when I was up at the top of Tulak, we saw smoke down by Gilmore Lakes. And we, uh, we called the Forest Service, and there was a small little fire down there. Oh, that's good. Yeah, so they were able to, you know, take care of it. Well, you know, with, the, with lightning strikes and things like that, it's good that, you know, you never know what's going to happen. No, <laughs> but I've never had anything personal happen uh, where I needed search and rescue or anything for. I've had my little accidents on the trail where bumps and bruises and a couple stitches, but... A couple stitches? <laughs> <laughs> Did you like looking that way at the view and the rock was right there? Or? Uh, well, kind of. It was only, it wasn't a rock. It was a... a a branch from a tree and it went in my leg just like a knife. Ooh. You know, when they break off, they're very sharp. And I was looking at the, the shoreline watching the rocks and I rammed right into it and went into my thigh. So you got to really pay attention to what you're doing when you're mm -hmm. walking around. Because mm -hmm. those little things can hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you though, the, uh, looking at the trailheads, uh, you mentioned parking for a fee, parking fee? Some of the trailheads uh, require a fee for parking and it's usually three dollars but that can fluctuate you know and change and more and more they're charging to park but there still are I'd say on my hike there's um, you have to pay to pay to park at uh, Eagle Falls and you have to pay to park then that's at um, Emerald Bay Trailhead there okay and you have to pay to park at Horsetail Falls and um, you have to pay to park at Winnemucca Okay. But, and they have huge parking areas for you and bathrooms, you know, so they have facilities for So you, you. get your money's worth. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes those are pretty important things. Yeah. <laughs> well, as far as um, uh, hikes, you mentioned a uh, hike uh, down the hill a little bit um, where there's a, a waterfalls or something? Mm-hmm. Uh, down at uh, Horsetail Falls. Okay. They're down right there at uh, Twin Bridges just outside of uh, Strawberry. Those are, the, those are the most beautiful falls in our area. So you said probably for targeting uh, springtime. Yeah, springtime is when you want to go to your falls because they're, they're really running. They're, they're, they're the most spectacular, you know, when their snow just first melts and they're just raging. Well, I've stayed at the hotel in Strawberry. That's a nice little place. Yeah, that lodge is real nice. Yeah, and they're real friendly people. And uh, the, the hike there sounded like a pretty good place to do. Yes, mm -hmm. and then they also have... Um, Heck, what's the name of that one? I can't think of that mountain right there, what they call it, but the rock climbers climb it all the time. Well, I heard it's called like Lover's Leap or something. Uh huh. Yep. Lover's Leap, that's it. And, um, <clears throat> well, I actually recommend that area because it's just beautiful and it's cool. Yeah, it's if you're like hot, little, go there because it's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's like a little Yosemite. Yeah. Well, we're uh, getting low on time. Uh, if people want to order the, your uh, video, uh, do you have a contact number? Yes, I do. It's uh, 530 541. Eight six four one. And as far as other uh, future hikes, uh, uh, other hikes on this video, what would you recommend? Um, any other hikes you want to talk about, real quick? Oh, they're all great. It's just about what, how much energy you want to put out there, and what you want to see, or maybe for time, maybe you want one closer to your home or where you're staying, you know. And so it's just whatever fits in your budget <laughs> of time and uh, and whatever else. Well, hopefully you can come back to the show and tell us more about uh, your take of hikes. And uh, I really appreciate us letting us show a couple videos. And you did a very good job. It's clear, concise. And I recommend, if you want to come in this area and hike, to get her uh, video. Take and, a hike. Uh, and take a hike. And, um, well, thank you for being on the show. And My pleasure. I really appreciate it. It's been Michael Smith for Nevada Trails. Thank you.